r slash ask reddit, what's the most ducked up shit you've walked into? Not me but my brother told me this. My brother is blind and so is his friend. Let's call him Kenny. Kenny lived with his dad until one day when his dad decided to hang himself in the garage. Kenny found him by bumping into him when trying to find him when he got home from work. Was the most ducked up thing I ever heard. Well that's a very little answer to Arp's question. At university I walked in on my housemate having cocaine blown up his ass with a bicycle pump by his girlfriend. They're married now so there's someone out there for everyone. Imagine how many other things they tried and got bored with before reaching that level of weird. During a night of drinking and partying, I laid my friend down in this room after he passed out outside. When it was to be to leave, I went back to the room to get him only to be greeted by a couple in full doggy style mode next to him as he slept, and I am talking pounding IT. A guy with a beer bong in his ass and someone pouring jack and coke in it. When I was young I was at my grandparents ranch. My grandmom told me to go out and help my granddad. He was in the barn with a cow birth and had been there a while. I walked out to the completely quiet barn to see him looking down in either disgust or sadness. I walked around to see the most disgusting thing. The baby was already dead inside the mom and had ruptured during the birthing process. This caused massive shock and prolapse of the cow. I saw a low of blood, a smell I will never forget, and the decaying face of a baby cow never born. An old friend of mine giving his now ex-girlfriend a knife and proceeding to tell her she just needs to do everyone the favor and kill herself. Now that's a risky move after you give someone a knife. I used to work in a prison. It's a British female prison and I was a male officer. At lockup time I was getting everyone back to their cells. Mainly by ineffectively shouting at the women. But slowly they were getting banged up for the night. I walked in this one cell to check and on the floor were two women inserting a 2L full coke bottle into the other. Fat end first. The inserters were about 25 and the receiver 50. I just noped out of there. Came back 5 minutes later and everyone was back in their own cell with just the receiver sat watching TV in her own cell. Not a word was said by me or them. Locked everyone away and never told anyone except my wife when I got home. And she was like yeah well you can fit a baby out that way a coke bottle isn't that much wider. When I was about 11 or 12, I went outside to go play and quickly found a trail of dead and puppies that my pregnant Rottweiler had left in the yard. I vividly remember that one was missing its head. I followed 3 or 4 of them into the detached garage where she stayed and found her, eating them. We were able to save 3. It was her first litter and she clearly did not want them so we had to take over their care. Still turns my stomach to think about. I walked in on my sons all pissing into the toilet at once while my daughter waited her turn. They were worried about going in on their own because they saw a movie about murderers hiding in bathrooms and killing people. My little brother, two years younger, and I used to accompany each other to the bathroom when we had to poop bc we didn't want to be alone for too long. The one not using the restroom would sit on the edge of the tub and we'd just have a nice chat about whatever. He grew out of that before I did and I stopped asking him when I noticed he started to get annoyed. We also used to take baths together and I was the first to say I was done with that. My mom came to get me and told me my bro was in the bathtub waiting for me to take a bath. I told her I take baths by myself now. I can just imagine his little face all disappointed when my mom had to go tell him the news. Growing up can be sad. In the late 90s there was an after hours bar I used to go to in Philly. I bartended so it was a good spot to grab a drink after work. It was also run by the mob. You pretty much had to know someone to be allowed in. It was a lesbian bar until midnight. Then feed close and reopen at 2am. So one night I get cut from work early and decide to go over there. It's about 1am. The bouncer knows my uncle really well so when I walk up he says it's no problem. I can go upstairs and get a drink even though they weren't open yet. So I walk upstairs and when I turn the corner I see the bartender behind the bar. And on the other side of the bar there's a guy chained to a chair. These two mob guys I knew were beating the piss out of this guy. I have no idea why. They weren't asking questions. And there was blood all over him. Bartender turns to me and asks if I want a drink. I was like nah. You know what? It'll come back after you guys open up. 
and I turned right around and walked back downstairs Grandpa Simpson style. When I left I told the bouncer he might not want to let people in early tonight, and I rolled. As a paramedic I walked in on 4 people overdosed in a small apartment. There was a large naked woman laying on a smaller naked man both in cardiac arrest with severe central cyanosis. There was a woman on the couch actively going into respiratory arrest and a man propped against the chair in just as bad off shape. Very long story short the woman on the couch and the man against the chair survived. The others were not so lucky. Best we could figure they all shot up a tainted batch of heroin. The two people started having sex on the floor when they went into respiratory arrest followed by cardiac arrest. The man in the chair had a cell phone near him, and was the one that called 911. If he wouldn't have, they all would have probably died. That was the worst OD I have walked in on. There are many. Walked into a friend's garage to his oblivious 13 year old sister blowing their dog. WTF. Went to a meetup group where the organizer was talking about how he had attempted suicide by slitting his wrists and he had been fascinated by seeing the muscles and tendons so he took a video of them. He went on to say that he had to delete the video because he was scared it would prevent him from getting custody of his kids. I got a wrist injury from a drunken night out and had to have surgery done in my wrist. Ran out the front door diving for the handle but missed and hand went through the window part but snagged and got caught in the glass. They numbed the area around it and told me not to look. I wanted to and he said okay but look away if you feel lightheaded. He was also instructing a student doctor at the time as well. So opens it up a bit more and goes into saying how this type of a wound is ideal for seeing how the tendons and ligaments control finger movements. Basically gives this whole class to her on it while turning on and off parts of the ligament which directly affected fingers and finger combinations. But it was absolutely fascinating and how much it was like the terminator hand was freaky was also surreal watching surgery being done on your own hand. Your dude is probably a proper creep. But I would just point out that how our hands work is actually so amazing. I had a beating with one of my professors at the university. I walked in on her screaming in agony after dropping hot tea on her crotch screaming oh. God. Stopped by an apartment complex to check it out years ago. They had a community area with seats and tables set up in their main office where people can sit and talk. They also had a computer in the corner that could be used by anyone who lived there. At the computer sat a man who was probably in his 70s and on the screen was an image of a vagina that he zoomed in so it filled the screen. He slowly looked back at me and made eye contact with me. He then slowly turned back and stared at the vagina some more. I backed out of the doorway and drove to the next rental office. My youngest brother is into cosplay. No biggie. He was actually pretty good at making costumes. Except this one time he made this one costume that he basically lived in, makeup and all. The character was a villain from some obscure video game. He would wear it every day, and if he wasn't fully done up he'd wear the white bodysuit and the headpiece instead. It was pretty terrifying. Well, one night I pulled into the driveway. We lived at the end of a wooded lot, and there he was standing, in full costume. His dirty ass costume that he never washed, at the end of the driveway, in the darkness. I couldn't tell if he was jacking it, or whatever, but I can only assume he was. It felt like some Ed Gein shit. Also, he came to Easter dinner in this costume one time. I'm sure it was some kind of sexual gratification for him. A couple of my co-workers pulled back into the station from a suicide call and my partner's looking into the back window as I walk out into the garage bay. I figured there was just a bloody mess in the back. I'm eating cheese its as we both walk around to the back of the ambulance. He opens the doors and now I'm staring at a dead body with essentially nothing left of his face. Suddenly the cheese its didn't taste quite as good. In Spain with my friend and his brother. Wasn't aware his brother was gay until I walked in on him being destroyed by a huge mori bloke. There were tears and blood and shit everywhere. To answer everyone's questions. This happened many years ago and it definitely wasn't assault. He was consenting. I think it got a bit messy and the guy was rather large hence the tears and blood. Maybe not the most ducked up. But it's the first thing that comes to mind. I went to film school with a guy who will remain nameless. As far as I know, his sole source of income was that he was a drug distributor. By which I mean, he was a dealer's dealer. He didn't typical sell weed on a retail basis but my usual plugs at the time were cleaned out so I asked him if he could help me out. 
and he agreed. I met him at his apartment, which was in a totally typical student rental Y type of complex. It was a large unit. He had one black leather couch, a small coffee table, and an enormous television. This was the year 2000, when huge TVs were as uncommon as they were expensive. Lying on the leather couch was a beautiful young girl in tight black pants and a black bra, shooting what I assume was dope into her arm. On the table was a Tech 9. I couldn't help but laugh a tiny little bit, like come on, duck out of here. This is like something out of a movie, or the kind of story that I wouldn't believe, had I not seen it for myself. We went in his kitchen, he took a bag of weed out of his fridge that was the size of my head, weighed me at one stroke 4 and I went on my way. In my junior year of college my best friend and I were helping pack up his girlfriend's room at the end of the semester when I heard some weird noise coming from the bathroom. It kind of sounded like someone having sex so I thought it would be hilarious to kick the door open and surprise them. It turned out the cleaning woman was on the floor having a seizure. This summer I was leaving work in a rural area in NY, got to the main highway, let a motorcycle pass, turned and started down the road behind him. He was going fast. Anyone who lives in rural NY can probably guess where this is going. I see a deer bolting across a field ahead of us. Surely this man on the motorcycle sees the deer? Hopefully the deer hears the motorcycle? Nope. The deer runs into the road. The guy wipes out. The deer miraculously jumps over the skidding bike and runs off. I stop my car. Start running to the guy while I'm dialing 911. There's a thin layer of what used to be his foot spread out over the road. He's screaming for me to get the bike off him. Other cars are stopping and we pull the bike off him while I'm trying to get an ambulance. His hand was completely ducked. His foot was pinned under his bike. His shoe came off. And it was shaved down to the bone. He took off his helmet. And we saw he was probably close to 80. He was chewing on a toothpick and it went through his lip. We wrapped a belt around his leg to stop the bleeding. The ambulance arrived, they took him, and I never heard what happened to him. He was wearing jeans, a leather jacket, no gloves, and loafers. The bloody skid mark that used to be his foot was there for days until it rained and got washed away. Was delivering pizza, getting off an elevator. As the door opened, a topless woman was standing there squeaking a rubber ducky between her tits. Her boyfriend stood in their apartment door busting up. They tipped $20 also walked in on one of my ex-roommates rubbing one out and I didn't realize what was going on until I saw his hog. I set the Xbox controller down I was returning and walked out. We were friends for years and never spoke of it. Was backpacking through Europe with three buddies years ago. And this happened in Amsterdam. One of our friends had gotten sick during the trip and had missed a lot of our Prague stint and all of our Berlin stint. Roughly 10 days. In Amsterdam he finally was feeling better and decided to join us on one of those touristy pub crawls. On the very first night out since illness. Long story short. He gets absolutely hammered and is all over the place. When we move on to a different bar with the group. We look around and can't find him anymore. 10 p.m. We assume he's either gone home. Or is gonna meet up with us. But we were drunk too and just assumed the best. Welp. Now it's 4am and we're walking home to our hostel without any sign of him. We're hoping he's home in the hostel sleeping. While we get back and open the door and sure enough there he was in the fetal position in his boxes on the floor of the hostel hotel room. What was quickly a sigh of relief to find him turned into horror and disgust. As we notice he, along with the entire room is covered in shit, like full blown brown town everywhere, on the beds, on the walls, all over him, his back, pants, think of that scene in Dumb and Dumber with Bob Saget in the bathroom, there's shit and puke smeared on just about every bed, and there was shit and vomit all over the bathroom, the kicker, too, was that his clothes had been neatly folded at the end of his bed, he has no recollection of what happened that night, I can still smell and see that room 10 years later. Back in college, I had a few friends in a sorority, and we'd go around to parties on the weekends. Walked into a some frat party, and while we're still in the entryway of the house, a girl with her pants around her knees is trying to run down the stairs, but trips and falls down half of them. We go over to see if she's okay, and three guys appear at the top of the stairs saying she's with us and she's okay. She's incoherent, doesn't know where she is, can't give me her name. 
the girls and I immediately decide to get her home. We get her pants back on, and I carry her out the door while we deal with the protests of the guys behind her. When in the car, she can't tell us where she lives, doesn't have her phone, and can't give us any phone numbers. She's totally out of it. Thankfully she had her wallet and it, so we found her apartment that way, dropped her off, and left her with her roommate. Whoa, you made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.